Welcome to Office 2013 video project number 17. Hey, this is our last video for Word, and for this video we have to download one and two start files. When I download those, I download them to my Word class notes. All right, so we're going to open up the, f the first start project. Video Project 17 TOC for Table of Contents Style Start File. So I'm going to double click and open that up. All right, so the last two tricks we're going to see in Word have to do with styles up here. Heading 1, Heading 2, Heading 3 styles. We saw them a little bit earlier in the class, but a lot of advanced tricks in Word depend on Heading 1, Heading 2. So Let's look at a table of contents example. This is the very top of this Word document. There's a page break here. When we go down, this is just a small example of perhaps a longer paper or book with sections. So there's an intro and what is Excel, rows and column. And what we'd like is we'd like to have an automatic table of contents where we just click a button and the table of contents is automatically created that will put the title for each one of our sections. And not only that, but as we add new paragraphs, if this section moves from page 2 to page 3, I want the table of contents to update. No problem. Heading 1 style. If we apply Heading 1, so watch this. I'm going to Control and Roll. Control and Roll. And then I'm going to see if I can use my selection bar and my Control selection trick. And so I'm highlighting certain parts of my Word document that are not next to each other. We've done this a lot of times so far. We know the trick is, is to hold Control. So it doesn't matter what zoom you have, just make sure you highlight each one of the section titles and then apply heading one. Now in this case, it's doing crazy things to our formatting. So I'm going to come up here and right click, modify. So for this particular document, I can modify the heading one and I'm going to change it to black. And I'm going to change it to font size 24. This has no effect whatsoever on the table of contents at the top. It's just I wanted to alter the style so it looks OK with my Word document. Click OK. And so there we go. All right, we've applied the heading one style. And by the way, let's control and roll zoom in. That little what looks like a bullet there is not a bullet. It's actually a non-printing character that says, hey, this is a style. So there's another one there. There isn't one right there because it's sitting up here with the page break. All right, so here we go. Control Home, and we're going to create an automatic table of contents. We have our heading one applied to all the sections where we want that we want to appear in our table of contents. References, table of contents. And by the way, look at this, heading one, heading two, heading three you can have subsections. So for example, I've written books in Word where Heading 1 was the chapter, Heading 2 was the section in the chapter, and Heading 3 were, was the subsection. So you can go wild. They'll all appear indented properly in the table of contents by using Heading 1, Heading 2, Heading 3. We've only used Heading 1. I'm going to click Table of Contents. And just like that, wow our automatic table of contents. Now let's go change a few things and see if this is really automatic. I'm going to use my wheel and scroll down. All right, we're going to stop right near what is Excel. I'm going to put my cursor at the beginning of that paragraph and control enter. So now that we have moved it from page 2 to page 3, that certainly will show up in our table of contents. We could change some of the text that bumped it to the next page and changed the text. And we could even add a subsection. So I'm going to hit Enter. And so now I'm going to apply Heading 2 to both of these. Now if I go back to Home, 
we saw this earlier in the class. A lot of times, heading one, the other headings, heading two, heading three, heading four, don't show up. We'd have to go down to the launcher. Boop. Over here, down in options. In current document, all styles. As recommended, uh -uh, I want alphabetical. Click OK. And so now I can simply come down here and apply heading two. So now we can see heading one, heading two up there. So there they are. I'm going to close this. Control home. Well, here's the moment of truth. Will this update? Well, as we saw earlier in the class, notice when we're hovering, this is grayed out. That means there's something secret going on behind the scenes. And we can see the code for it by using the toggle Alt F9. Alt F9. Remember, it's a toggle. It goes in and out. In, see the code. See the result. All right, so it's a simple little bit of code behind the scene, Alt F9. Now, updating. A lot of these grayed out areas, or what are called fields, now in later versions have an update button at the top. If you can't see that, then simply right click and you will see update field. If in fact it is an updatable field, you'll see this drop down. I'm going to click update field. It's going to ask me page numbers only. No way. I want to update the entire table, meaning the text and the subsections. I'm going to click OK. That is totally beautiful. It got the different page numbers, the additional text that we changed for one of the sections, and even the subsections. All right. Now we have not F12 to save this as a different name. I want to keep that start file, so I'm going to hit F12. I'm going to call this finished, T-O-C, finished table of contents. It's got the right location, file name, and extension. Click Save. Now, that was our first trick with heading styles. I'm going to go ahead and close this and go back to Windows Explorer in our Word folder. And I want to open the second start file for Video Project 17. Boomerangs are easy to throw. Start file. I'm going to hit Enter. All right, so now this Word document opens. And we haven't talked about PowerPoint yet. But PowerPoint is going to create presentations. There will be slides. And at the top of each slide will be a title. And then on the slide will be bulleted list of the main ideas or pictures or other things. But here's the thing. Sometimes you already have all of the titles and bulleted information in a Word document. So there's a great feature to send a Word document automatically to PowerPoint. And it will create the PowerPoint for you. Now, it will create all the slides. You have to do the formatting over in PowerPoint. But here's the deal. I'm going to Control and Roll. We're giving a presentation about boomerangs. Boomerangs are easy to throw. That's going to be the title slide. And then we're going to, on the next slide, talk about selecting a good sports boomerang, whether or not it's left or right, the fact that you have to go to a large park. So on this slide right here, that's the title. And then we're going to have one, two, three bullets. All right, so you ready? We're going to format this so that when we click the button to send to PowerPoint, it understands what is going to be a title and what is going to be a bullet. And it has to do with heading one, heading two. Anything in this Word document with heading one, that will be a title. Anything with heading two, heading three will be bullets and sub-bullets. All right, ready? So we're going to use our control selection trick. I'm going through and I'm selecting only the titles. This means the text that's going to get heading one. Now, you can do that either with the selection bar or your I-beam. But however you do it, control and select your text, then click heading one. Now, for us, it doesn't matter at all what it looks like over here. We're just using heading one, heading two as the trigger to, so that PowerPoint knows what in this document here is a title and what's a bullet. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing for the remaining. And I do not want those hard returns. If you format hard returns with heading one or heading two, you'll either create empty slides or empty bullets. 
The empty bullets don't matter so much. Uh, however, if you format that little paragraph mark with heading one, it'll be an empty blank slide. So I'm selecting only the paragraphs that are going to be bullets, including, I'm not going to get tricked here, there's a little, there's a few extra bullets on the next page here. So I'm going to click Heading 2. Control and Roll to zoom out. If you don't have Heading 1 and Heading 2, all the text will just show up on one slide. Now I'm going to F12, and I'm going to call this, I called it Heading Styles for PowerPoint. I'm going to save this as a different file than that start file. Now here's the thing, there's not a button anymore automatically in Word. Nowhere in the ribbons is there a send to PowerPoint. Now in earlier versions, it was in the menus. So anytime you have a situation like that, go to the Quat. Right click, Customize Quick Access Toolbar. The trick is, is once you get Quick Access Toolbar, choose commands from, you want to be polite your, to yourself, you want to see all commands. Now, you could say commands not in the ribbon, that's fine there, but all commands, that's cool because it gives you all thousand plus features that you have in Word. I'm going to click somewhere in the list and type in S. It's under Send to PowerPoint. It's Send to Microsoft PowerPoint right there. So Send to Microsoft PowerPoint, click Add, click OK. All right, you ready? We're going to click this button. If you do this all the time, that is the button you want on your Word Quat. Now, it's going to send it to PowerPoint, automatically create it. It won't create any formatting, but watch this. Click. And just like that, it has created our shell presentation. All right, so you can see over here. And that's absolutely amazing. In our next video, we'll see how to format this. I'm going to control S. Remember, control, oh, I don't want to control S. Because then I have to click once and twice. So if it's never been saved, F12 saves you a click. I'm going to say boomerangs are easy to throw. And I'm actually going to save this to our Word class notes just for now. All right, now I want to close this. I promise you, next video we'll have uh, fun with PowerPoint. I'm going to close this both the Word document, I'm going to say, if you don't want to add that button, there is another way to get a properly formatted Word document into PowerPoint, and it's actually a cool trick. I'm going to open up PowerPoint, either go to your Start or you know, the Taskbar and open up PowerPoint, it'll app, open up a blank. All right, and I'm opening up and I'm going to select this blank presentation, and watch this, I'm going to go File, open computer browse and I'm gonna browse for that word document now the filter of course because we're opening in PowerPoint uh, won't allow us but no way down here in the open dialog box we can say all and now we can see all of our files including Word Excel or whatever we want to find our heading styles for PowerPoint. So check this out. It's a Word document. We're opening it in PowerPoint, but because it has those styles, it automatically bloop, just like that. All right, I'm going to F12 on this, and I'm going to call this the same thing, but second, and then click Save. Second, and then drill down and find our and I'm going to save this to PowerPoint because we're going to use this next video. So this PowerPoint one here. All right, so in this video we saw in Word, heading styles help us do some advanced tricks like creating automatic table of contents and even taking Word documents and creating PowerPoints. All right, we'll see you next video.